We have 15,000 employees um, with 1,600 hires for 2018. Um, and typically we have around 26,000 applications each year. So a lot to manage and obviously to make sure that we maintain a strong candidate experience. Um, the high volume job family um, delivers around 25% of those hires across the business. So we've got a team of 12 and my team, there's three of us at the moment, um, and we, like I say, are responsible for 25% of those. So they comprise of all of the high volume roles. So anything from a train driver to a highways operative to administration roles as well. So our objective is to deliver on this volume whilst providing a positive stakeholder and candidate experience. So what we wanted to do as well was to limit our agency usage. Um, this has historically been very high across the business with difficult to fill roles where we were spending high and our engagement with the business was particularly low because of that. So what was our approach? Um, we implemented a new way of working for the high volume and blue collar job family. We met with all of the stakeholders in the business to understand their challenges. What were their issues? Why were these roles not getting filled? And how could we create a better and quicker time to hire? Um, like I say, they were particularly disengaged. They'd had very little involvement with the recruitment team previously. Um, we'd put a lot out to agency. So we had a lot of, I suppose, ground to cover. So my team took it back to basics. We went out to the depots. We went out to the business to really understand why were roles that typically, um, you know, we should have high volume of applications for. Where were those challenges? Um, and actually, by reaching out to the business and trying to understand that, that tore down so many issues from the offset because they could see that we were trying to get into their business. I work very closely with the team. So the team that I recruit the most for, which is our rail business, I actually work within. Um, and again, that makes them feel like I'm part of the team opposed to the recruiter. Um, we introduced a number of new initiatives across the business. So a completely new way um, of doing things. So with um, a new ATS system, it allowed us to create talent pools and pipelining of candidates um, so that we had candidates ready to go. So for example, for our admin positions, majority of them are based in Newcastle because that's where our um, employee services team are. We now have a database of candidates that we are able to e-shot out um, and fill a role in most cases without even having to advertise it. We also started focusing massively on referrals across the blue collar business. Um, as a rule, we don't pay referral fees for weekly paid workers. Um, so nobody had really focused on referrals before. Um, all of a sudden now we talk about it a lot as part of my hiring manager briefings. We encourage them as a team to share the positions, speak to their business about it. Um, and that's seen a massive uplift of candidates being referred for no money. Um, we also work closely with industry as well. So um, I do a lot with Rao News. So we've um, had a, a recent advertising campaign with them for all of our train driver positions and also with qualification bodies. So um, Lantra, just to throw some names at you, which is a, a high speed qualification to work on the highways um, for a way to um, engage with their candidates so that we can um, tell them about our jobs because Ultimately, for the blue collar business, um, part of the business, we struggle massively to engage with candidates from an online perspective because they're just not there. Um, what else did we do? Um, we started introducing assessment centres. So for our train driver positions in particular, um, you know, the, the market is saturated with roles, um, but there are more positions than there are candidates. So what we wanted to do was also educate the business as well. So we spoke to them about <coughs> What can we do differently? So we, we spoke about the challenges before they arose, if you like. So we, we spoke about the fact that actually, what about bringing in trainee train drivers as a business that's great for Balfour Beatty, 
So we did assessment centres for trainee train drivers um, and from that we were able to fill 20 of our hires, which is quite significant for those type of roles. Um, local advertising, something that Balfour BT hadn't really done before. Um, you know, in local newspapers, the, you know, the Mercury, the Gazette, um, for our highway maintenance operatives, again, they're not on the usual LinkedIn platforms, they're not on job boards. Um, and year on year, we struggle to fill the highway maintenance roles, and I'll, I will touch on those throughout this presentation, um, because they're really difficult to reach. Um, so we sort of went back to basics, if you like, um, and for £1,700, which was the cost of the local advertising across a range of newspapers, and also it went on to radio as well, we were able to fill our highway maintenance or winter maintenance operatives for our 2018-2019 um, programme by September. We're still usually scrabbling about trying to fill them in February and March. So we've had a really good success rate on those, and that's just purely by looking at what we need to do differently for our candidates. Um, we also did Facebook campaigns. So again, um, LinkedIn not being the platform that we can use in job boards. Facebook campaigns have been fantastic because what it allows us to do is reach those type of candidates. It comes up as either a sponsored ad, um, so it's completely targeted at the type of candidates that we're looking for. But also as well, we encourage um, in our depots, in our offices, for our people to share those roles as well. Um, and that's probably where we get a majority of our applications. What approach did we take? Um, we took time to understand the business needs um, and the requirements. Um, like I say, we sat down with each hiring manager and each stakeholder um, to talk through what had gone wrong in the past and how could we fix it. Um, we also, again, we all work to volume roles and it's very hard to manage those, those roles. Um, you know, I, I've got colleagues that are on 36 positions. I generally work on about 110, 120 personally at any one time. So I group those roles together so that I can, I run um, calls um, with mass or multiple hiring managers so that we can take the same approach for the same type of roles and that the business can talk about their challenges together so we can come up, about, we can come up with new options and new ways of doing things. Um, like I say, spending time with the stakeholders is probably the most important thing um, that we've done as a team. Um, and looking at the reoccurring roles, so winter maintenance operatives, being um, able to understand our challenges that we've had in the past. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing, is to always look at, OK, if we, we as Balfour BC, we get a lot of the same roles coming through and we have the same challenges. And, you know, doing the same thing and expecting a different result each time is you know, the definition of madness. So I think what we've done now, and, and actually the business has responded really well to this, is that they can see that we do a different approach constantly. Um, and that has enabled us to fill our roles quicker, more efficiently and with better hires. Um, we have regular feedback calls and again, you know, so busy that, you know, I don't have the time to, you know, speak constantly daily to my hiring managers. But what we do is, is as a role comes in and I take the briefing and I encourage my team to do exactly the same, is that we set weekly diarised calls to either discuss the progress or indeed the challenges of that piece of recruitment. Because with volume, with volume recruitment in particular, it can be really hard to keep on top of your workload. And this is a really good way of taking ownership and indeed as well as making sure that the hiring managers are getting back to you with that feedback. Challenges, and there are many, um, as I'm sure you'll all agree. Um, you know, and for me, the biggest one is, um, you know, having been in recruitment for 15 years, sourcing candidates was always, you know, job boards, LinkedIn, cold calling, you know, going through companies that you could approach. Um, this is a completely different way of doing things. And, you know, so those usual channels have just completely gone to us, um, as certainly within my team. Um, and of course, the Balfour BT model still uses this. But um, so it was about, OK, if I can't use these platforms, what platforms are available to us? And hence, looking back on you know, what I've just spoken about in regards to the assessment centres, the Facebook campaigns, um, local media, etc. Um, and it's, it's worked really, really well. Um, candidate retention, you know, again, the blue collar market, um, people will move on for 25 pence an hour. So we have to be really, really clear when we're speaking to candidates about the role, selling the Balfour BT brand. It's a fantastic business to work for with progression, opportunity, development, and making sure that we've got the complete candidate buy-in. Um, so it's about utilising your time effectively, but most importantly, making sure you've got that engagement with the candidate. Um, 
so the solutions and I'm not going to pretend that I've got the answer to, to that um, but you know int we introduced a streamlined approach um, we looked at the best ways to market our positions um, you know and we 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 admitted and I suppose looked at where have we gone wrong in the past um, you know the Facebook the referrals um, getting the business on board and I think it's been mentioned in previous um, presentations mm -hmm. it's not just the job of the recruitment team to advocate the recruitment and bring on people we need to get the buy-in from the business because ultimately the best people in my business to bring in highway operatives or train drivers are the train drivers themselves or the highway operatives themselves so I will go to depots I will do presentations to the teams to talk to them about the benefits of bringing in people that they know and again it's stuff like that that ultimately means I've got operatives that I've never recruited but they will give me a call because they know me um, expanded Balfour Beatty's reach to the market so like I say the local attraction campaigns um, although when I first mentioned doing this I think the business was very apprehensive um, the local radio proved to be so successful and at a cost of £1,700 um, it filled I think 30 to 40 of our, um, of our highway maintenance operatives roles, the winter maintenance positions. Um, and if you look at what that would have cost going through agency or indeed the cost to the business um, for failure to deliver on time, it would have been huge. Um, we changed the way we recruited volume hires as well. We wanted to try and give back time to the business because my view on it is if I'm struggling to manage X amount of roles, if you've got a hiring manager responsible for 20 positions, 30 positions, finding the time to um, interview and to go through CVs. So it was a way of trying to come up with solutions for them as well. So, you know, we did things such as group interviews um, where, um, you know, we would have much like an assessment centre, but rather than having um, any group exercises, etc., it was very much getting as many people in from the business to speak to these people and engage with them so that we could fill um, multiple roles quickly. As a team, our high volume um, recruitment team were responsible for 380 of the Balfour BT hires in 2018, um, with 378 of those sourced directly. So our cost per hire was £17 per person which um, when we look at the other um, part of the business was massive and the savings that we were able to make so what it's allowed us to do is to be able to spend money on areas that ordinarily we probably wouldn't have had the budget for don't over promise and under deliver we need to give clear timelines and keep it simple um, you know certainly in my world I deal with a number of hiring managers so stakeholders candidates um, and so I'm very clear about what I'm going to do when I'm going to get back to them um, so that they know and they understand what the process is going to be. Um, you know, again, for me, it's all about retaining those volume candidates as well. Again, something that came up. Um, and I think something when I was going through all of those questions, the thing that kept coming up when I was sort of trying to answer them was communica communication, relationship building. People relate to people. Um, and, you know, sometimes when I'm really busy, I have to keep saying to myself, serve the role, not the queue, because sometimes, you know, you get to a point where you're just trying to, you know, get through everything. Um, and what we want to try and do is still make it an experience and a positive experience for everybody. Um, filling challenging roles, I think, as recruiters, these are never going to go away. This is always going to be a challenge. Um, but what we need to do is understand the role. We need to look at it, break it down and offer realistic, achievable solutions. It's so easy to sit down when you're taking down a briefing and come up with these amazing things that you're going to do when realistically, do you have the time, the budget? So keep it real, keep it simple um, and make sure that it's achievable. Um, how to cope with the pressure was another one that came up. I know sometimes I'll sit at my desk with my head in my hands as the emails are mounting up, the roles are mounting up. But actually, just take a step back, prioritise, um, you know, look at what's important, what, what are the things that you can affect here and now, um, and um, what are the roles that you, you can fill. Um, you know, especially with, you know, our team, we've got a team of 12 for Balfour Beatty that actually are part of the delivery team. Um, if, if they're working to slightly lower numbers, we will delegate and ask um, for, for help elsewhere. So, you know, always reach out to your colleagues as well. Um, Dealing with challenges around large recruitment drives, um, we have this all the time. Um, and 
we look at each piece of recruitment separately, looking how best to serve the recruitment, what we need to do differently, is an assessment centre suited to this role, um, you know, do we need to do a campaign? So it's, it's about coming up with a, a strategy when we take the briefing so that we're very clear what we want to do, what we need to achieve and when we need to achieve it by. If you're not at that point when you get to the have needed to achieve it by, then you need to readdress it very quickly and come up with a, a plan B.